Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all this morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to get started in just a moment. Let's pray first. Father, we thank you for this day and for your blessings. Thank you for this time in your word and allowing us to study together. Thank you, Father God, for deepening in and increasing our faith even as we study your word. Be with us now and open our hearts, our minds, and our understandings that we may hear and understand what the Spirit is saying to the church at this day and hour. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. We're going to start at point two on your outlines. That's page three. Where does faith come from? Where does faith come from? come from. We ended last week, of course, talking about what sends people to hell. And what sends folks to hell is unbelief. Unbelief is translated by our actions, by our behaviors, by our belief systems, by our mindset. If you believe, there's a change that takes place in life. If we believe, we allow the Holy Spirit to take over and to control and to rule and to have his way. If we don't believe, we may say one thing, but do something else. And all of us know folk in the church, outside the church, that say one thing and they do the opposite. So we were talking about that last week, and so now we're be beginning, where does faith come from? And this picks up where the uh, book actually is. Point one, God gives faith to all who are willing to receive it and believe in him. One of the things that I have often wondered in my decades now here on earth is why is it there are some folk who are saved, some folk who believe, and then there are others, and some of them are even in my family, who simply do not. They simply go the way that they want to go. They're not always bad people. They're not the ones that you can't trust. I found that the ones I can't trust the most are the ones that go to church all the time, but that's another story. Uh, but the ones that you can't trust, the one, they're, they're trustworthy, but they simply don't trust God. And I wonder, what is that? Why is that? Is that a, 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 a mindset? Is that something? And I've shared with you how I had an uncle on my mom's side, who was a devil. He, he, he did whatever he wanted to do. There wasn't a woman out there that he wouldn't run around with and, and, and all the other things that he did that he should not have. But my grandfather prayed, and between 77 when my grandmother passed and 85 when my granddaddy went home to be with the Lord. He told me, because I went and spent, my brother and I went and spent a week with him the April before he died that July 8th in 85. He said, uh, grandsons, I walked through this house praying, calling all 10 of my children's names, because all 10 of them were still here, and calling all 27 of my grandchildren and their spouses, those that have them. He said, I got none but time. And y'all know out in the country, they didn't have TV and, and, and satellite and all the other stuff like we got now. And he was a man of prayer. He said, I done prayed for your uncle." And I'm just trusting God that he's going to be all right. I may not see it, but I'm trusting God he's going to be all right. And that uncle was a rascal. He even came up here, and I invited him out in my parents' backyard so I could kick his behind because he said something dumb in my mother's house. That's just how rowdy he was. Of course, he had the sense not to show up out there. But uh, he finally passed a few years later. This century, he passed around, I think it was around 2007. But one of my aunts, who is a prayer warrior and a minister also, she stuck with him. After my grandfather passed, she stuck with him. And believe it or not, that reprobate mind was saved. And before he passed, before he passed, he told my aunt to tell the others, I made it. That's my grandfather's prayers being answered, what, 20 years later? Are you hearing me? So the, even though there are folk that seem like they simply are going to go their own way, you keep praying. You keep trusting. Because it only comes from God. 
And God will work it in such a way as he did with my uncle, as he did with other family members that, and, and other friends and other people we know, that one way or the other, if they're going to be saved, they will accept it at whatever time. And, and the Bible says here that John answered, John 3rd chapter 27th verse, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. Remember Jesus said, and I didn't put this in here for time's sake, but I'm going to quote it. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hear my voice and open and let me in, I'll come in and sup with them and they'll sup with me. We'll be together. That's what Christ offers everyone. And as the church, that has to be our mission. That has to be our message. Instead of telling folk and writing folk off because of whatever and wherever they are, we have to let them know Christ is still there for you. Amen. Amen. Number two, there must be a willingness to receive from God and not be hard hearted or blinded by the enemy. In St. John, the first chapter, 11 through 13 verses, it reads, he, meaning Christ, came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, he gave the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let me stop there just for a moment because realize that you are saved. You are here not because we voted you in as members. That's a practice that I stopped over 20 years ago. We used to say all in favor of receiving so-and-so as a member, as a candidate for baptism or as a, uh, a candidate as, as, under their Christian experience, say aye. And my mindset was, as I explained to you as a congregation then, if the church can vote you in, the church can vote you out. Are you hearing me? And if your faith in Christ is what it's supposed to be, nobody can put you out. Are you hearing me? You may change church addresses and locations where you worship, but nobody can put you out of the body of Christ. And so what we simply do is we affirm and receive with joy by saying amen. Let the church say amen. 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 So no one is born or born again. No one is born again of blood or of the will of the flesh or of a person's will only by the will of God. Y'all see that at the end of verse 13? Amen. St. John, third chapter, 18 through the 21st verse. Jesus said, he who believes in him is not condemned. In other words, those of us that believe in Jesus Christ are not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. That's what we're facing nowadays. People don't want to know the truth. It's, it's more now than, you know, don't tell, they just don't want to know. And so everyone is trying to go along and get along but here's the problem. I was, I was watching, uh, well, I may as well say it. I was watching Push yesterday, and the new pastor at one of our major churches in the city of Chicago was doing good. And then he turns around, and he says that any black folk who do not have anything encouraging to say to LGBTQIA folk, they're doing wrong because the oppressor, the oppressed can become the oppressor, something along those lines. And I was like, wow, where did that come from? Because the civil rights movement was born because we're born the skin color and the heritage that we are. We're not, we weren't being oppressed because of who we slept with or to get biblical because we were disobeying God. Being black does not bother God. He created black 
He created Africans. He created all of our races, whatever it is. And to stand as a preacher of the word and to give affirmation, which is what he did, to people who are defying the word of God. And understand, like I said, I got family members that do what they like to do on all shades. And there's no big sin and little sin. In my family, I got fornicators, adulterers, liars, homosexuals, lesbians, thieves, extortioners, gossips, and I could go on and on. And you notice I made it personal. I said family, not church. So y'all can still say amen. But we got, we got the same in the congregation. There's no big sin and no little sin. We cannot go after one and act like the other one's okay. And down south, that's what they did. They, they act like if, a, if, if the men fooled around on their wives, that's no big deal. But if, you know, he was gay, oh, let's take him out in the woods and shoot him. And I heard an uncle say that. In fact, it was the one that was the devil anyway. Okay? And all of that was wrong. We have to show love to everybody. Y'all hear me? And we have people in this congregation that need that love. But you cannot, I cannot, as your pastor, act like any of that that I just listed is okay. Because if you go back to Revelations 21 and 8, Revelations 21 and 8, we read that at the end last week. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, the liars, they will all be consigned to the lake of fire of burning sulfur, and this is the second death. Here's the thing, y'all. If, if, if you go to a doctor and he finds a tumor and he tells you that tumor, don't worry about it, it's okay. It's fine, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. We're not going to treat it. Don't, don't, no chemo, no medication. That doctor is guilty of malpractice. And a preacher that doesn't tell you the truth is guilty of spiritual malpractice. Their stuff, when I sit under preaching, if it hits me, you know what I say? Ouch! And I say, Lord, help me do better. And I go on. Are you hearing me? Because it's not condemnation, it's warning. And that's what we have to do, is love each other unconditionally and thank God that he saved me, he saved you, and we're going to help each other through whatever it is. Am I, talking, am I talking right? But when I heard that, I was like, you know, too bad the folk in the lake of fire can't sue some of these jack-led preachers that didn't tell them the truth when they were on earth. Amen. But it, it, you know what? It's going to be worse than a lawsuit because some of them jack lay is going to be burning next to him. Oh, Lord, lights. All right, let's go on. He said, they didn't want, in verse 19, this is a condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. Verse 21. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. And then 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. In other words, the enemy will blind people so that they don't understand or don't receive the word of God. And you know how he does it? And we've heard it. I don't need to be sitting up in church all day on Sunday. Now, since the pandemic, no, nobody that I know sits up in the church all day on Sunday. Most churches have their services on Sunday morning and see y'all next week. Right? Well, uh, all the preacher wants is money. No, because you get an honest preacher, then what's your excuse? 
uh, ain't nobody in the church any good. Well, that's a lie. Because everybody I got in here, solid gold. Amen. Every one of you. I mean that. You know. But, but the enemy will blind their minds. Well, they hurt my grandmama when she was in church down south. Really? And grandmama would tell you, baby, it's over now. <laughs> you know? But there are so many things that the devil uses to keep people from receiving Jesus Christ. And even, and there was a question, and it was a valid question, because God's not angered when we, at, when we question him. Uh, why would God let the pandemic come and take so many innocent lives? Because there are members, there are seats in this place that will be vacant because God called so many of our good folk home through that pandemic. And I even said, Lord, now, you took sister so-and-so, but I got this one over here and caused nothing but hell. Why are they still here? <laughs> As preacher talk. <laughs> but, but seriously, God doesn't mind when we question him. But they use that, well, if he was a good God, he would have kept big mama from, you know, or kept my brother or kept my wife or kept my children. Listen, the enemy will use whatever he can to blind us to God's goodness. When you see that, you pray, as Paul prayed in Ephesians, first chapter, that the eyes of their understanding is opened. Amen? That their eyes are open and that they will come to know that even when bad stuff happens, God is still good. You know what? I'm going to make a note and preach that sometime this fall. Even when bad stuff happens, he's still a good God. And I could ask Job about that. I, we, could, we could even talk to David. Huh? We, 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 could, we could have conversations, let's see, with Hezekiah, Esther. Oh, God, let me, let me, let me work on that in my office. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm taking time out from here. Number three, we receive faith through the word of God. So the Bible is how we build our faith. Romans 10 and 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can't receive faith from a Sunday school book, from a commentary. You can't receive faith from a jack leg on Word Network or Impact or wherever. We receive faith by the word of God. If they're not teaching and preaching the word of God, faith doesn't grow. Because nowadays, and, and see, that's the thing. We have to be very aware. God's people are much more savvy. They've always been intelligent, but we're savvy now. We catch stuff. And when I'm listening to somebody, I'm first filtering it to make sure, does this line up? with what I know the word of God to be. But then when I see and, and the Holy Spirit confirms, okay, this is cool, then, okay, then my faith starts to grow according to whatever the topic is. Are y'all with me? Faith comes by hearing, and that's why it is so important, so important to be taught the word and to receive the preached word of God. Amen? Number four. Those who desire and seek to do the will of God will come to the knowledge of the truth. John 7th chapter, the 16th through the 18th verse, and I chose the New Living Translation for this simply because there were, there was, there were some parts in this that the authors used I wasn't 100% with, but I can use this and explain it to you this way. Jesus told them, my message is not my own. It comes from God who sent me. Anyone who wants to do the will of God will know whether my teaching is from God or is merely my own. Those who speak for themselves want glory only for themselves. But a person who seeks to honor the one who sent him speaks truth, not lies. So it's up to us, are you hearing me, to say the truth and not lie to folks. And if you really want to do right, God will bring it into your mind, bring it into your presence. This is what's right. 
and we go from there. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Who is the true object of our faith? Number one, this is point three. The entire Bible points to Jesus Christ as the true object and the recipient. He receives our faith. This emphasizes, this is emphasized rather in the Old Testament. This is really emphasized in the Old Testament. That's what it should say. This is emphasized in the Old Testament. I'm sorry, I, I mistyped. Luke 24 and 27. Jesus said, and the beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, church, when the Bible, when in the New Testament they're talking about scriptures, they're talking about the Pentateuch. They're talking about the prophets. They're talking Old Testament. They're not talking about the gospels because the gospels have not been written yet. In fact, as we read, the writer is recording or has recorded what happened for our reading in the old in the new testament paul had not written the epistles peter had not written his epistles uh jude had not written what he was going to write neither had james or uh anyone else for that matter so when they talk about the scriptures when you see the word scriptures in the new testament in the gospels is talking specifically about Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, the Old Testament. Y'all with me? Luke 24, verses 44 through 48. Then he, Jesus, said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened his mouth to understand, he opened their minds, rather, to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And remember when Jesus got ready to go back, Acts 1 and 8, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. And where did he start? Jerusalem, then Judea, which surrounds Jerusalem. That's where uh, Jerusalem is located. And then Samaria, which is next door. And then to the uttermost parts of the world. So it always starts in Jerusalem. Amen? John 5 and 46. For if you believe Moses, you would believe me. For he wrote of me. And then 2 Timothy, third chapter, this is the writing of Paul to Timothy, 14th and 15th verse. But you must continue in the things that you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. Again, Timothy only knew the Old Testament, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Now, let's go on. The honor roll of faith, number four. The honor roll of faith is Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And I kept, I kept it short because knowing the time that, that we have, I didn't want to go and get into something where I tell you all, you know what, let's have class on first Sunday. Because we're taking the month of, I'm going to read this from the NIV. We're taking the month of August off, but we will come back the second Sunday in September. And I'm pulling this up on my phone in the NIV. Hebrews 11. The honor roll of faith is our example of what faith is. And... There's a key word at the end of Hebrews 11 that I'm going to take you to to understand what faith really represents for us as believers. By faith, verse 4, I'm skipping to verse 4. If you have your Bibles, go to Hebrews 11. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Stop there for a minute. 
In the book of Revelation, it says that those blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, yea, for they uh, shall rest from their labor, but their works do follow them. Those of our, our family members, those who are members of this church and all other churches, those who are our friends, who died in the faith, died serving Christ, even though they're with the Lord, their works still speak. Am I right? It's like, uh, 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 in men's case, it's like a cologne. When you walk past and you, you still have that fragrance that lives on, their works still speak. And that's, and that's what he's saying here, even about Abel. Abel still speaks. And it's not talking about his blood crying from the ground. It's talking about his record, what he accomplished, that he pleased God. Why was Abel's uh, offering accepted and Cain's rejected? Well, think about it. Abel raised sheep. Cain raised fruits and vegetables. When Cain gave away or sacrificed or burned what he had tilled from the ground, he really didn't lose anything. But when Abel sacrificed his lambs, those lambs were forever absent from his flock. He gave of himself. It is like the story of the chicken and the pig. And the chicken was bragging, oh yeah, I laid seven eggs this morning and they are going to use my eggs tomorrow. And they're going to have a big, beautiful breakfast. And the pig said, well, I understand they're planning to have ham. I won't be here tomorrow. Because the pig gave of himself. You see the, the importance. And, and, and church, no matter where we are in life, no matter what we're struggling with, what we're dealing with, when we give God our all, Oh, that, 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 that means so much to him. And that counts as righteousness. Remember, I, I, I taught you before, faith in Abraham counted as righteous. We're exercising that faith, and that counts as righteousness. Verse 5, moving on. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken away, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. For anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. See how those are connected? We've always quoted that, that without faith is impossible. But he was talking about Enoch. And Enoch pleased God so well that God said, boy, you don't even have to worry about death. Just come on with me. And Enoch left this earth only 300 years old. Why is that significant? Because in those days, most folk made it to six, seven, eight hundred. Amen? By faith, Noah when warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark. Think about this. You building something that has never existed before for something that has never, ever happened before because it had never rained like that on the earth up to that point. But God told him, it's going to rain, build an ark. And Noah, for 120 years, not only built the ark, but preached, it's going to rain. And they were like, Negro, you crazy, man. Go, go on over there and play with your gopher wood. But it rained. He obeyed and, 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 and did what he did. And by his faith, he condemned the world, still in verse 7, and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. And then it goes on to talk about Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, it goes on, and, and look at verse 13. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. Like my granddaddy talking about his fourth son, his, his uh, third son's salvation. He didn't see it. 
but he welcomed it from the distance, admitting they were foreigners and strangers on the earth. Verse 14, people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. That's our new Jerusalem. He has a better place for us. And anyone who really loves God, no matter how good, how comfortable, how wonderful things are here, when he calls, we will answer. Now, I'll be honest, I'm, ne I'm in no hurry. I'm not in a rush. I love y'all. I think most of y'all love me. I got a great family. God has been good to us. But when he calls, like Deacon Whaley used to sing, hush, hush, somebody calling my name. And I got to answer. Are y'all listening to me? That's the honor roll of faith. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regards to their future. By faith, Jacob, verse 21, when he was dying, blessed each of, each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned on top of his staff. By faith, when his end was near, Joseph spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months. All of these things talk about Faith, faith, faith. And then if you skip down to verse 32, what more shall I say, the writer asks. I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions. So here, in the earlier verse, we saw that there were those who believed and didn't get it before they left. But here we see, and this is important, how they put their faith in action. Verse 33, they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised. Look and tell somebody, don't give up on your promises. Whatever God has promised you, you keep believing. You hold on for it. Because by your faith, you will gain what God has promised. Y'all should be shouting right there who shut the mouths of lions, because if they hadn't, they'd been ed up, who quenched the fury of the flames, the Hebrew boys, escaped the edge of the sword like David, whose weaknesses were turned to strength, who became powerful in battle, routed foreign armies. Women received their dead raised back to life. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released, that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in half like Isaiah was uh, reported to be. They were killed by sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them, verse 38. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Are y'all with me still? That's what the honor roll of faith is. Because that better is when we get to see Jesus. That is what we stand on by faith. And so that when our loved ones leave this world, and it breaks our hearts. The only thing we have to hold us together is his promise. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I got to leave that one alone myself. Uh, number two, the Roman centurion in uh, chapter 8 of Matthew, verses 5 through 10, that came to Christ and asked Christ to heal his servant. He was not even a Jew. He didn't know anything about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he believed in Jesus Christ and said, all you got to do is say the word. All you got to do is say the word, and he will be healed. And Jesus said, I have, and told the crowd, he told the crowd then, I haven't seen this kind of faith in, throughout all Israel. 
and he healed that centurion that moment. And then I just preached about the, uh, the, the Canaanite woman, the Syrophoenician woman in Matthew 15, verses 22 through 28. And he told her directly, I have not seen your faith before in Israel. And he, and, and, and he healed her daughter instantaneously. Let me hurry on because I got to finish. The rewards of faith, and I got about four minutes to do it. Number one. Our faith yields salvation and eternal life. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, Jesus said, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift Because one of the things that many people feel they can do is earn our salvation. We cannot earn our salvation. If we could earn our salvation, Jesus would not have had to die. We cannot be good enough. We cannot give enough. We cannot do anything enough to earn our way into heaven. We go to heaven, and those who have died in the faith have made it into the presence of Christ because of their faith. And how is that faith put in, on display? I believe that Jesus is the Christ and that God has raised him from the dead. Jesus, that's it. That's it. Okay? First uh, Peter 1 and 9. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. And then grace and help, grace and strength rather, this is what we get from our faith, to help in our tribulations. And I just read Hebrews 11 to you, so I don't have to go back into that. But that is what God does as a result of our faith. How many of you know that it's worth it to serve Jesus? It pays to serve Jesus. And, and the most beautiful thing of it all, he knows all of us. He knows all of us. He knows we're not perfect. He knows when we're not right, but he loves us unconditionally. And because of our faith, we have to love each other unconditionally. Jesus said, why do you look at that moat in somebody else's eye? And you got a whole beam. Y'all see these beams laid together from from." right behind this TV all the way up to the roof. I can't imagine how many feet that is. Have one of them hanging out your eye and you looking at a speck of dust as somebody else. We got to love each other. We got to look out for each other. Pray for each other. Amen? Pray for each other. And when you pray, believe what you ask for. There are things that I've been asking God for for many years. Some of them he started to answer. Others, I know he will answer. I'm not, I'm not doubting. I'm not wavering, but I'm going to keep asking because I want him to know I mean what I say. <laughs> Amen? But when you pray, believe what you ask for. Imagine that it's already done. There's some of you here that have that testimony. You've gone through what you've gone through. And you've had family members maybe near the brink of death. Maybe you were near the brink of death. But look at you now. Your, God answered your faith. You said it ain't over. God's going to do it. Did he do it? Did he do it? Why don't you look at somebody? I'm done now. Look at somebody and say, won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? He will. If, it's, if, if, if it was after 10 o'clock, but I ain't got to wait till after 10 o'clock, I could just say, oh, he will. Yes, he will. And he does. Every time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day and for your blessings. We thank you for your word and for this time in your word. 
Thank you, Lord, for your promises. And thank you, Father, for building up our faith, for reminding us that we are saved by your grace through our faith in you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us of all the things we can do when we believe and trust in you. Thank you, Lord, for letting us trust in you and being able to come boldly into the throne room of grace to get your help in our time of need. Have your way now, Lord, with your people everywhere, those under the sound of my voice, those that will view this via the live stream, those that will yet to come and come to know you as Savior. Father God, heal us, save and deliver. We're ever mindful to give you the praise and the glory. And it's all in the name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you.